What's up, y'all? It's Daniel, your Schumalier. Fans of the channel will know that my reviews tend to lean heavily on the big two, Adidas and Nike. Running in third place probably is New Balance, fourth Reebok, and fifth is some sort of tie between Asics and Puma, and maybe a luxury shoe here and there, or a random like Koyo or something European and underground. I think I have only reviewed a Vans shoe maybe once or twice, and I think that's because it was a Simpsons or Peanuts collab or something like that. But really, I would say I probably only have reviewed Vans less than at times I can count on one hand. And it's not because I don't like the shoes, it's just because I really don't find myself attracted to a lot of Vans. I don't skate, and I'm not saying you only wear Vans to skate, but let's be honest, they're kind of a skateboarding shoe. And they don't have boost, they don't have air, they don't have react, and there's nothing super innovative or interesting or unique or original about Vans that makes me have to run out and get it. But then I saw previews, I saw photos, I saw videos of this new silhouette that Vans released and my curiosity was piqued because I was wondering, does this make Vans more comfortable? Because honestly, I find Vans to be some of the least comfortable shoes out there. Again, I realize that because I don't skate, I'm not speaking from someone who wears Vans for the right reason. That's similar to why I don't like the Nike Dunks, not the SBs, I haven't tried those, or just the regular Dunk Lows. I read in a comment section that skateboarders want to have more of that board feel, and if you add air or cushioning or all that stuff, it kind of takes away. So I guess that's the same rationale for a Vans. So this silhouette, this colorway, this new shoe that I'm trying out, I thought maybe it's going to be comfortable enough to be a lifestyle shoe. So I ordered it because it was very affordable and there are plenty of shoes on the website. And today we're gonna talk about the Vans Evident Ultimate Waffle. Using the unique Ultimate Waffle construction, the Evident Ultimate Waffle features an upper comprised of knitted mesh, making it considerably breathable as leather overlays and rubber accent pieces give the shoe a more pronounced form. Each pair is branded with a retooled version of Van's signature side stripe to give it an iconic look. To create the Evident Ultimate Waffle, Vans leveraged decades of experience in skate shoe technology and its newly developed Ultimate Waffle outsole construction to create the perfect lifestyle shoe for all the time wear. An asymmetrical perforated leather vamp and flipped iteration of Vans iconic side stripe lend a unique appeal to the shoe while the translucent outsole makes it a true showstopper. The Vans Evident Ultimate Waffle released on June 11th, 2021 and retailed for 100 US American dollars. Now when it comes to fit, I'm normally a size nine across the board. That's Ultra Boost, Air Force Ones, Jordan Ones, New Balance, Pumas, Asics, etc. And in these Vans shoes, I ordered my size nine and I find that these shoes fit my foot true to size. I have a normal size foot, definitely not wide, maybe narrow in some places, but I do like a little wiggle room in my toe box and I don't like my midfoot to feel locked in. And I thought that these shoes fit my foot just fine, though I'm not wearing them for skating, so I can't tell you that if you're gonna skate, how to wear them. But for lifestyle purposes, I find that the shoe fit true to size just fine. Now, when it comes to comfort, Vans is really excited about their sock liner and that insole that's supposed to give you more cushioning so that you can wear this shoe on the daily. And I will admit, I find this shoe, this particular Vans silhouette, more comfortable than any other Vans silhouette I have tried on and worn. Now, I didn't wear it for a long time. I didn't wear it for a whole day, so I can't comment on fatigue or how it feels when my foot swells or anything like that. But I will say that for the limited time I did try it on, I found the shoe to be comfortable. Now, of course, it's not Air, it's not React, it's not Zoom, it's not Boost. So if you're expecting a cloud, bouncy, cushion-like, cotton candy feel, this silhouette is not for you. But if you like a normal kind of rubber outsole, but you want a little bit more bounce, a little bit more squish, but not too much, so you can still feel the floor, feel the concrete, maybe feel your board, then maybe this shoe is for you. As for me, I'm probably gonna add this shoe to my beater's pile and just wear it on the daily when I go run errands or do things around the house or just run to the mailbox. I don't find myself wanting to wear this shoe when I need to wear a shoe eight to 10 to 12 hours, though it might be a good experiment for a what's on my feet today later on to wear it and see how it holds up, see how my feet hold up and see if it's as comfortable as Vans really wants it to be. 
Now what really grabbed my attention about this shoe was the silhouette. It's a really cool design. It looks like a Vans shoe. I liked the gray and the white and the light blue, which seems to be very du jour right now out there in sneaker culture. I did like the oversized logo that you'll see on the tongue and the iconic Vans off the wall logo that you find on the back of the heel. This shoe also has some of the softest laces I've ever encountered in a shoe. I'm not sure what it is. It's definitely not cheap. I wouldn't say that it looks or feels like cheesecloth or anything like that, but there's just something about these laces as I was putting them on and tying them and relacing the shoe that I thought, these are really comfortable. And I don't know, when I touch them, they feel like satiny. There's something about these laces that feel fantastically amazing. If Vans sold the laces separately, I'd probably buy these and put them on tons of my other shoes. But the laces are, weirdly comfortable and great feeling. And then that insole, the Ultimate Waffle Vans insole, it is removable. It does have the insignia and logo work inside. It is in blue. And again, Vans is really happy and excited and touting their sock liner and insole as part of the whole awesome, comfortable silhouette technology that they're going for this shoe. And then of course that really cool translucent light blue gum rubber outsole. It looks cool. It feels kind of cool. It's got a nice grip on it. So I guess if you're going to skate in it, I guess you could skate in it. I don't know. I will say one thing about the shoe that I found weird when I was doing the on footage and when I was walking, when you rub your shoes together, you hear this. It's almost like Velcro, but not Velcro that sticks together. It's the two sides that are right. The other side is the one that's kind of soft and this is the hard side. Not sure why it is what it is. It's probably that textile upper that they have on there. It also lets you breathe a little bit more, but it was interesting because people always comment about how when you walk the bottom of your shoe squeaks and this one, I mean, anybody out there need a, a turntable and a microphone? You can, you can uh, spin the ones and the twos with these. Call me up, I'll DJ your wedding. So there you have it, my thoughts on the Vans Evident Ultimate Waffle. Let us know in the comment section down below what you think about this new silhouette, what you think about this colorway, any skaters out there that can comment on anything I said about comfort, about feel, maybe you've worn this shoe, is it good for skating, do you like it better, not so good, lifestyle, etc. Skateboarding is a whole world that I've never really got into. I never skate or died, I never hang 10, I never popped an ollie, I can't do a kickflip. So if Tony Hawk drove by, I would recognize him, but I couldn't do a kickflip. So sorry to all of you out there. I grew up in the 80s and 90s when skateboarding was like skateboarding, and it's been having a resurgence, a renaissance as of late, but it's just not something I'm into because I think I would probably fall off and break my leg or something like that. I did skateboard on like a tiny skateboard. It was like thinner than everyone else's. Back then, everyone made fun of me and said it was a girl skateboard. I don't know. I've seen some girls doing some pretty mean tricks on regular size skateboards. So I don't know what toxic 80s, 90s behavior and bullying, whatever. I don't care. I was fine. I came out. I came, I came out just fine. Thanks. Anyway, let us know in the comment section down below what you think about these shoes and skateboarding and lifestyle in general. So to all of you out there, wherever you are, thanks for watching. Stay tuned and just chill till the next episode.